friends, Dean here with Escape to Gaming. Today I wanted to do something interesting. Uh, I just watched, in fact, I've watched a couple of videos. Uh, Shen Muzo had done a, a, a posited 10 gaming related questions. And I don't know the original fellow that he got his, his questions off from, but I, 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 I really enjoyed his answers and, and certainly enjoyed the questions that were put forth. I thought they were quite interesting. And then the wonderful Steve Benway. Uh, just did on a Saturday speak, he followed up with the same exact questions, and I enjoyed his answers to them. And then he also talked about, he brought up an interesting point of his own that one of his own viewers had asked him. So uh, even though I like those questions, I, I was inspired by Shin Muzo and Steve Benway to kind of come up with my own 10. In fact, I came up with 12. So a couple of them are similar. But these were things that I've been kind of thinking about anyway, because I kind of liked the, the, the gaming-related questions, and I wanted to put forth and posit my own 12 questions to you. So you could do a video response if you'd like. You could leave in the comments um, answers to them. Most of these, if you can just leave a, a total, it'll, it'll be either one answer or perhaps a total of three. So if I ask you about you know, your favorite, uh, you know, this or that or whatever, you, just, uh, you can pick your top three games or consoles or whatever the question is. So... Anyway, here they are. Get my list. Got my reading glass. Just went to my eye doctor this morning, and I've got to have my prescription up. So I'll put these on just for a minute. Um, what's your favorite generation of consoles? This is my, my first question of the 12. Um, and of course, I'll answer these for myself. Uh, the Super NES was one of my favorite early, even though I love the Commodore 64, the leap up in graphics, just the fun that I had with the arcade style games, Super Star Wars in particular, Outlander, many other games, F-15, Strike Eagle, some of the micro uh, prose games that had spilled over onto the Super NES from the Commodore were games I really enjoyed. That console overall was one of my favorite top three consoles. Uh, followed The PS1 is, a, this is really tough to choose, but I, I really thought carefully about them, about the, the consoles I enjoyed the most, had the most fun playing on. And I'm looking forward to collecting. Again, the PlayStation 2 would have to be the, my second choice. I just loved that console and had the, probably the most games of that on that console and any other console. Quite a few, over 30 on the Super NES as well. And I would say uh, the, the final one uh, to date would be the Xbox 360. Even though I love the PlayStation 3 and the regular Xbox. In other ones, the, the Xbox 360, I've got well over 100 games on that, and God knows how many Xbox Live Arcade games downloaded. And I just, it'll be one of those consoles that I can see playing for, you know, decades. As long as the things will continue to work, and I'll be able to, you know, have my favorite games and patches and DLC, what have you, installed within my hard drive. But so far, those are my three favorite consoles. Leaving the questions, what are your top three? Uh, my second question is... <clears throat> What's your favorite gaming franchises? And pick, and I'd say pick your top three of these. This is tough. I mean, there's so many. Um, I can certainly say for myself. In fact, I got a few games that kind of correlate with some of these. Um, I would say right off the bat, uh, the Duke Nukem franchise is one of my favorites. Uh, going back to the original Duke Nukem 3D, which I have on my Xbox, or arcade live deal I downloaded off from there and had it also in an early one of my earlier PCs and enjoy it. Uh, I especially love this, you know, the third person platformers at Duke Nukem Time to Kill, Land of the Babes, which I need to get from my collection soon. Uh, and even I'd say Duke Nukem Forever. I have the Manhattan Project off Xbox Live Arcade too. It's a really fun little platformer. A lot of the little one liner quips and what have you, but I love the Duke Nukem franchise. It's very much in keeping with my um <clears throat> Simplistic mindset and it kind of relates, it reminds me of the 80s, you know, back when action movies and action heroes were king. Uh, they could certainly do a really realistic, uh, you know, version, a reboot of it today with kind of a, a, a rough, kind of a Max Payne 3, you know, Duke Nukem is kind of down on his luck and a little tired and worn out, who's gets kind of called back into the fold again, it would be really interesting. But that's one of my top franchises, is Duke Nukem. Uh, the other one, and this is there's so many I like, it's, it was really hard to pick these, but I, I gotta admit that the Grand Theft Auto series is just awesome. Whether it's Grand Theft Auto 5 or 3, I'm anxious to play 1 and 2. I actually have uh, Grand Theft Auto 2, including the one to 1989 version as well, which I'm dying to play, but 
I just over overall for just a wonderful, well written stories. Rockstar did themselves the open world element, just the hours of fun. This is an endless franchise I never want to see end. I would say my third one, even going back to the wonderful uh, Wolvenstein 3D, is the Wolvenstein franchise. I certainly love the Return to Castle, uh, and I love this one as well. And I can't. I'm looking very much forward to the new Wolvenstein, the new Water. So. Those are my three. I'd love to hear your three. What are your favorite picks of your favorite franchises of all time? There's so many great ones. The third question, um, what games could you never finish for whatever reason or that you rage quit? Perhaps these are ones that you racked your brain. You tried and tried as you, as, you, as you could, but for whatever reason, you just could not get through them. You couldn't finish them. Uh, you really found it difficult. And, and you wanted to see it through to the end, but you just couldn't. Now, these were tough. I, there's quite a few. and It's embarrassing. Naturally, you know, you want to think you're in a killer game. Or, oh, that game was nothing. I blew through that thing in you know, a few hours. It was no big deal. In fact, I put it on the hardest level. Uh, some games I can do that. Uh, this new Call of Duty Ghost is actually really easy. I could probably easily beat that on the hard level. But some of them were just tougher than a cheap steak. Uh... The first one that comes to mind, and I will be getting this game soon when I get my Super NES, is the wonderful, mesmerizing, and just absolutely perfect arcade game called uh, Super Star Wars and the Super NES. I, I can't think of any game that I just, I wanted to be, I would, you know, I was like one of the biggest Star Wars fans. I mean, I was there opening week to see Star Wars. I've seen it God knows how many times at the theater. On VHS, you know, on VHS widescreen, on DVD, on Blu-ray, and I'm just so excited about the franchise. It changed my life early on. So no one wanted to beat the game worse than me. I just couldn't beat it to save my. Someone had a Mac ten to my head. You either finish this game or you die. I'd be long gone. I'd be long dead. Uh, super, the Super Star Wars. I actually made. I remember getting inside the Death Star. It had wonderful little platforming scenes where you're inside the main tube where. Obi-Wan Kenobi shuts off the power, and you can see all those little elongated ovals in there. I just loved that scene, and I, it took me forever to get through that one. Eventually, I got to the outside of the Death Star, to where you attacking the Death Star on the outside, and you're in the trenches, and I could never beat the level. I just literally rage quit it. I thought I was going to lose my mind. I never smashed controllers or got overly violent or put my fist to the wall like some of my friends did, but that game just outraged me because I couldn't finish it. So that, that would be the most... Uh, mind-numbing, frustrating game that I've suffered through was the Super Star Wars. I'd have to say other ones would be, um, oh god, I got them right here. This game I love, and I would love to see, you know, a, a new version of this, is this Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb. Now, my father-in-law, I played this on his PlayStation 2 years ago. We were snowed in, I remember staying there a couple times I go up there in the winter. And I usually stay for a few days to a week. And one time they were like, we can have these played a bunch of games. But this game I loved. I watched him play his favorite levels. I went back through, and then eventually he, he knew I loved it. He gave me the game. Um, and I, I think I, I gave that game to a relative, another friend. And then I rebought it recently over the summer. Is this Indiana Jones game. I love this game. It's an overdue concept. This is one of the most wonderful uh movie type ga licensed games that get made into a game from a film that I love the series of and I wanted to beat it in the worst way and it's ridiculously insanely I, again I don't know if I could do it it's a timing thing I can beat the puzzles uh, a lot of the platforming you can get used to it takes a while to get used to the kind of clunky controls and a lot of these older games but this one just some of the timing sequences was were just maddening and because of the checkpoints, you'd have to go all the way back and redo the whole level. I, I thought I was going to pull my hair out on this one, but this is one of those really tough, grinding games that I really had a hard time playing. Uh, the, the, the final one, there's so many, there's actually several. I mean, I got you know, probably six or seven games that I really rage quit and had a hard time beating. This is the one that I wanted to beat in the worst way and couldn't beat was this Red Dead Revolver. I did really well until I got about right to the, exactly the halfway point in the game. I even had the strategy guide for this, which I'll have to you know, see if I can find it again. Because I love the game. It has this beautiful spaghetti uh, western music in it. It's very well done. It's rock star. It's very challenging. Uh, it's quite removed from the wonderful Red Dead Redemption, but there was one 
level in the, in the in the middle of the game where you're under a bridge. I remember there was a bridge, and you had to fight this general. It was kind of a civil war deal. And there's cannons up on this hillside, and you have a, a lengthy gun battle under the bridge in the in the in the river. Then you get up on the bridge, and there's enemies just coming out of the woodwork. And as they're coming across the bridge, you're trying to kill them. Meanwhile, you have to fire a cannon to, to mark where your guys had to focus shooting on. And I just, I, I did that level probably 50 or 60 times. I just couldn't beat it. I tried and tried and tried. And I rage quit it. And it's a shame because I had a, one of my best friends who beat that game. And I go, did you ever finish, by the way? And I never thought he'd say, yeah, did you ever finish Red Dead Revolver? Dude, I've been all through that game backwards and forwards. It's nothing. It's a great game. You know, I was just, I remember being pissed off because he could beat it. It always irritated me. I could never beat it. So I was upset. I had to get it over the summer. I said, I'm going to beat that game. I'll have to get another strategy guide. I love the game. It's got a tremendous amount of charm to it. It's a lot of fun, but just tougher than a cheap steak. Um, Heroes over Europe, too, would be, as an honorable mention. Uh, the final level on that, that I've done probably 30, 40 times, and just, I, I can't beat it. Now, I could lower the difficulty setting and probably easily beat it, but I refuse to do it. That, that'll be another one, but anyway. So just, I'd like to know what yours are. Put down, you know, what are your top three, or do them in a video response. Games that just frustrate the hell out of you, that you either rage quit or just couldn't finish for whatever reason. Um, what other ones? What, uh... Okay, what, here's a good one. What popular games uh, or franchises out there that you just you just don't like? Maybe you gave them a chance. Maybe you really rolled your sleeves up and put your all into them, but you couldn't get into them, and you feel bad. It's like, well, God, I guess I'm not a gamer because I don't like this you know, franchise or that. Uh, I have actually quite a few. I narrowed it down to three. Uh, one of the first ones is, is, the, is the Halo series. And I remember watching when I first got on... Uh, in 2008, I got on the internet looking at game reviews. I discovered GameSpot and many others, and I'd see these wonderful reviews of Halo and Halo 2, and everyone was just, Jeff Gertzman, everyone loved him, was just raving about how great the game, the Halo series was, and maybe it was because it was more of an online deal. I never played it for that. I went out and bought, I found a really clean copy of, for my regular Xbox of Halo 2, and I just saw these glowing reviews. Oh, it's even better than the first one. I just couldn't get through the game. I just, I don't know. It was the Space Marines, um, the way they looked, just the, the, the bland, the one, every corridor looked pretty much the same. The exact, you're finding the same bugs or aliens or whatever they call them over and over. I just couldn't, I know it's sacrilegious to say this. I don't want to step on anyone's toes, especially, you know, because the series is so beloved. I just don't like the Halo series. In fact, when I got my new... Xbox 360E. It came with a brand new Halo 4. I, I took it out immediately. I said, could you open the box up? The manager said, oh, okay, you're going to buy it. I said, oh, yeah. And I pulled it. I said, how much you give me for a Halo 4? He goes, we'll give you $3 for it. I go, really? It's a brand new game. Goes, I know, but it's not worth much. I said, give me the 3 bucks. I just And it looks, the graphics look beautiful, the cutscenes. I just can't get into it. So, sorry if I stepped anyone's toes with that one. The other series, again, another Xbox exclusive, and I had the first one and the second one is the Gears of War series, which I think is beautifully done. The graphics look good. The gameplay is relatively satisfying. I think maybe the first one, it was just a ridiculously dismal gray color palette. And the kind of the Resistance series kind of reminds me of at least the first one. It was just very grayed down and just very mundane. I, I, I thought I couldn't get into it. I don't know if it was the characters. It just didn't gel with me. I like the over macho attitude of the guys and everything, but I just couldn't get into the series. I like, you know, something like, um, uh, what's the name of it, uh, Bulletstorm a lot better, which is made by some of the same, you know, people, apparently, but that one I like was a very vibrant, colorful, and a real amusement park ride, but I couldn't get into the Gear series. Now, the, Ge the Gears of War 3, i got to admit, looks really good. The reviews look good. The Horde mode, I like the graphics of it, look fantastic, but Maybe I like that one, or Gears Judgment. I just couldn't get into that. The third series that I, I just can't get into, probably because I was an adult when, the, when it was very popular, is the LEGO series. All the LEGO games. LEGO Batman, and LEGO Raiders of the Lost Ark. And I, I, I don't play with toys anymore. I love toys. I mean, I got, you know, tons of cars and models and, you know, die-cast cars behind me and... Uh, little collectibles and miniatures. I, I, I like toys and action figures and stuff like that, but I just can't get into the little Legos. I mean, 
to me, it's even Minecraft, as simple as it is, I know why people like it, I'm not blind to it, but I don't play with little, it's like, maybe, because kids grew up with those in the 80s or whatever, and then they're very endearing to them, their childhood memories, I don't want, again, I don't want to step on anyone's toes, but I just cannot see the fascination with the Legos games, I just, if someone paid me to play one of them, I, I would probably choke on it, I'd struggle trying to get through them, but it's just me, I'm sure they're fun, they, they look, the graphics look good, but it's like, you know, if I want to go back to that 8-bit or 16-bit era, I can't. I don't know why we're playing new games that, that look very blocky and, you know, it's basic like that. I don't know. I can just think of other games I'd rather play, but those are mine. Let, let's list yours. I'd be curious to hear. I always like to hear other people's things of what they like and don't like about gaming. I find it very fascinating. So let me know what, what are your top three games that, for whatever reason, you just your franchises you just don't love. They're popular franchises. Um, the, let's see, the fifth one, okay, this is an easy one for me, but do you prefer physical media or digital? And how do you feel about the future of it, if it goes, you know, one way or the other? Um, you know, for me, I can honestly answer, I definitely love physical media. I love <clears throat> owning the game. I like having the game. It has your original booklet. Just, you can see, it, it's almost like going back in history. I remember this one, it, the day it came out, I, I was obsessed with Rockstar Games. I bought this right away and loved the booklet and the wonderful game disc and the, the artwork on the back of it. I just like seeing the package, smelling the, the vinyl and the plastic and just holding it. And just the way the light hits it. I, I'm a big collector, you know, as an artist and visual person. I like seeing what I own. It's real. If I can see it, it's real, you know, so it's uh, having, now I just, you know, downloaded off uh, Xbox Live Arcade, I get it because of Xbox Gold, they got the wonderful Dead Island game, which I just downloaded for free, they got this wonderful thing, now I don't pick them up on every free game, it's Sleeping Dogs they already had and all that, but because Dead Island is so buggy, and I knew that probably would come with all the patches and everything fixed in it, so I'll download that one, um, and, I, and I also have the box. I mean, I, I enjoy it. I still have the box here somewhere, or maybe I've got it in the other room where all my Xbox 360 games are. But uh, it's nice to have the original box. So it, it, just because I have it in my installed in my uh, Xbox 360, I'm going to keep the original box because I like the artwork and remember pre-ordering the game and all that. So I, I'm a big physical media person. I know a lot of you are too, especially as retro collectors. But this, if it goes digital only... I have no qualms. I don't care how immersive it is or the multiplayer. I don't. I really don't care how the graphics or be double 1080p. I don't care if it's digital only and I can never own it, or if something happens with the servers or the cloud-based, you know, dynamics of it. I, I, I'm not interested at all. I will jump off and I will just go back to my old Xbox 360 games, PlayStation 3, regular Xbox, PS2. Uh, Super NES, what have you. So that, that, but that's me. I know not everyone's the same. A lot of the older gamers feel the same way I do. The younger gamers, that they're in this fleeting world of everything is like a disposable Bic lighter. It doesn't matter to them. The things they're into, they're into right now, tomorrow. Who cares? I'm on to the next thing. So, and that's fine. I was the same way. I validate that not everyone has this, you know, reverence for posterity and all that. But that, anyway, it's just how I feel. Um, I'd like to know either way how you feel about that and why. You know, would you, uh, even as a collector, would you just do a, buy a console down the road that was digital only? I'd be curious to hear your answer on that. <clears throat> Get a drink. Thirsty. Next one. Oh, this is one of my favorites. What's your favorite artwork for game boxes? Of all the games, I mean, could go be back to the 80s, 90s, newer ones. This is tough. I mean, there's some I could list, you know, 20 or 30 of these. But right off the bat, and this could change. I mean, tonight I could go to bed. Oh God, I forgot this one or these five or whatever. But what are your favorite box art games? What 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 artwork on the boxes captivated you the most? Or you really liked the way it looked, or every time you saw that box, it pulled you in and you wanted to play the game or you thought as a marketing graphic design person you like the overall style of it. I look at box, uh, the gaming and box art kind of from different perspectives as a graphic designer, certainly as what pulls me in, and there's many different facets to that and little nuances, but <clears throat> this is one that I really thought about quite a bit, and it was tough to choose to pick these down to three. Again, I'd like to hear what your top three are, but 
here's mine. Um, I've got the beautiful Twisted Metal. I got this over the summer, the tall box of Twisted Metal. I love the logo. I love the box art showing a nighttime scene with all the buildings in the background. It reminds me of the Warehouse District. Uh, when I first saw this, this sold me. I mean, I had already knew. It was only, it had been out like two or three days, the PlayStation 1. I went down to my little local. It was at the Orange Mall in Orange, California. I think it was Electronic Boutiques, if I remember right, or Babbage's, or whatever they called it at the time. And they only had a handful of PlayStation 1, uh, you know, games that are in, out there along with the PlayStation 1. And this immediately, I saw this, and I saw the back of this, and I just go, my God, this is me. I mean, this is me ripping all over. Just the car combat, the missiles, launching the missiles from this car, and it's arcing around and coming after the ice cream truck, taking ordinary vehicles on the back. And this beautiful artwork on the back, too. Show like a little halo around each vehicle. You are what you drive. I could relate to this. And I said, what a beautiful game. I, I never get tired of looking at this. I remember the day, uh, the next day after I bought this, I remember going out on a little uh, road uh, drive out to the desert, and a friend of mine was driving. And I left the game. I even took the, the original booklet with me. And I remember taking this booklet with me and just telling my friend about how excited I was that, that night to play the game. And I was showing him the little booklet and the artwork with us. It's brushed stainless and the bullet holes and everything. I, I just love this artwork. In fact, I have, I've mean, got to get on it real soon. I've, I've got Mark Bustler's Twisted Metal Painting, which actually has this exact logo in it. And um, I'm anxious to do that. Uh, let me put this all back in here. I'm kind of A-type about this stuff. But I love this booklet. I lo love this game. And I'm, I spent a fortune for this tall box in absolutely mint condition. But I love this game and the artwork very much. That game, and just seeing that box, I, I was sold. I was on the fence with the 3DO. The 3DO didn't have Twisted Metal. This was like the, the proverbial push over the cliff for me to get a, a PlayStation 1. And I, the series hasn't disappointed me. 3 and 4 I, I could have done without. Uh, even like Twisted Metal head-on, and Black especially. And I love the new one of the PlayStation 3. I'd get a PlayStation 3 just to play you know, the wonderful new Twisted Metal from 2011 or whatever it was on Valentine's Day. which was exactly a couple years ago. Uh, the next game, and this is tough. Again, this is the greatest hits box. Um, the Xbox box, I like. I think it was the nicest looking, but I have the PlayStation 2 box for the game Black. I love the, the design of this. Just the very simple design of just a giant wall of bullets. And you had this wonderful black logo in here. I even like the thick bold letter style. It had kind of a brushed steel look and a bullet hole punctured through here. I just, every time I saw this on my copy table, I had the Xbox version I played all the way through. I love this game. And I never got tired of looking at it. Even the back of the box showed the just dynamic lighting and the bullets and um, the action. This captivated me right off, and I was not disappointed by this. In fact, the other night, I stayed up till midnight replaying this off Xbox Live Arcade. But I love this box. I think it's one of the nicest, cleanest designs I've ever seen. Just the, the logo, just the bullets. It gets right to the point. They've yet to I, Why they haven't come up with a sequel to this is absolutely beyond me. I honestly don't know why. Now, this is an unusual one. This next box art I like is one of my favorites, and I played this and had it for the original Xbox, and then I eventually got it for the PlayStation 2, is the gorgeous uh, Driver Parallel Lines. I even like the, the artwork on the back as well. I love the colors of this. It has kind of an iridescent look to it. It's real kind of a shimmering look. It's got a kind of a, a, a they took like a Dodge Challenger. They slightly would change all the cars a little bit so they didn't have licensing problems. But it looks like a Dodge, you know, Hemi Challenger. Um, it's got that snorkel, you know, hood scoop coming through the hood. And it's got the, the cool little uh, dude, you know, behind the wheel that you play in the game. Uh, Driver has always, you know, had really cool box art, but I love this one. This is one of my favorites. Beautiful New York City in the background. It's, it's slightly tilted. The very clean graphics, parallel lines. The back of it, um, set up, locked up, get out, get even. It's a really cool story. It starts back in the 70s, and this guy goes through as a professional driver, getaway driver, and does all these mi missions. You meet all of these people that are all connected mob in the mob world. They set him up, sell him down the river. He does serious time, gets out like in the 90s or the 2000s. Everything's different, even looks different. And they portray all that in this box. 
the music, everything about this game is nice. But I love this box art. I just love the colors. It shows the two different, I think the guy's name was Ray or whatever his name was in the game. It shows him, you know, back in the 70s when he was young. It shows him uh, nowadays, that older out of the joint, weathered, kind of like Max Payne 3. But great pictures in the back showing the, the stunts and the cars and damage. I, I, I love the Xbox version alone. The box is even my favorite with the little Xbox logo on the top. But this is my, my third favorite box art. There's so many. That was a really hard one. That was probably the hardest of all these questions to pick. Let me know what yours are. Then again, they could be older games. Super NES. I, I love the box art. Even on like Super Star Wars and stuff like that are fantastic. Uh, but let me know what, what are your favorite top three games, the packaging, the boxing that captivated you the most. When you see them, you just get excited. I'd love to hear yours. Okay, the next one. Well, let's see. We had... Oh, what's your what favorite game series or franchise would you like a sequel or a reboot or a reboot of? Now I just mentioned Black. I'd, certainly that would be kind of a um, I'd say um, honorable mention on Black. But my my three favorites on that one uh, I got those right here actually would be a Road Rash. Why the living hell? Don't they have, well, they haven't remade Road Rash. Now, I had Road Rash 3D. I've never played Jailbreak, but I love this series, and I'm going to have to get the Jailbreak one just to try it, and I'm going to get the Road Rash 3D as well. Now, this I'm going to rebuy in the tall box. I actually had this the first week that PlayStation 1 came out. I had a nice tall box version of this, the little corrugated edge, and I love this game. I'm going to get another one. But um, this game is um, fantastic. It, need, it begs for a reboot. I don't understand. I don't know if it's EA has some reason why they won't, uh, if they have the rights to it or somebody else does. I, or, I don't know where the, the game is in limbo and why it hasn't been released into a new, but this, you know, with the graphics today, unlike the PlayStation 4 or even the Xbox 360, this would be an incredible winner. Marketed right, it would be a huge seller. Everyone loves this, uh, this game that I know. I've never met anyone that's played this that doesn't like it. They've got to make a reboot, a sequel, anything to Road Rush. Honest, honest to God, they do. Now, personally, this is one I would like to see. I have a feeling it won't be for obvious reasons because it, it almost brought Rockstar down, especially the, the second one, is the Manhunt series. Why the hell they don't have Manhunt redone today? I'd love to, even the reboot of the very original story and characters would be fantastic. I would pay anything, hundreds, the price of a console for this game. I, I, I'm shocked that they don't have it. it. The game, for whatever reason, it really got inside my head and I could not stop thinking about it weeks after I stopped playing it. And I've gone back to it over and over again. I'm going to be doing a review of this one for sure. I love this franchise. I even like Ma uh, The Manhunt 2. Very different with story, um, premise. How you actually control two characters versus one. Uh, very different, even the mechanics of it were different, but in the same vein and theme and darkness of Manhunt. But they really would be awesome to have a Manhunt reboot. Oh my god, Rockstar. If they could do like a Max Payne 3 Manhunt with those kind of graphics, hiding in the shadows, running for your life against a bunch of drooling killers, I mean, it would be over the top with all the typical Rockstar little things that the guys say while you're waiting in the hiding in the shadows. And, it would terrify me. The, even the, the second one was just over the top. I mean, I would just literally, I thought I was going to have a heart attack when, I'd, when they'd spot you and you'd run to the next you know, hiding spot. I would be terrified. Now we have that Outlast game, which is similar, but it ain't the same thing. Uh, I would say the third one, and there's many of these I can suggest, but I don't have the very first one, but I'll show this one, is the, the Miss game. Now, this Miss Ribbon I never played, but I love the first one, played it twice. I played Miss 3 Exile twice. We get this wonderful new Jonathan Blows the Witness come in, which will be a pretty close proximity to this. I think it's on the same vein with it. But the music, the ambient sounds, just the, the mature theme and storytelling and how it was presented of these Miss games is amazing. It could be a whole, it doesn't even have to be with the static shots like they had back then, but they could do a wonderful a reboot of this franchise. Uh, there's so many people that love indie games and puzzle games and platformers and stuff that would love this game. I would really love to see a, a reboot of that series. So whether it'll happen or not, God only knows. But anyway, 
It'll, I'd like to know yours. So what are three franchises that you love that for whatever reason they just doesn't seem like there's anything forthcoming but you'd like to see either a sequel or a reboot leave them in the comments i'd love to hear it. or do a video response be even better um get another drink here an honorable mention on that one by the way would be the terminator series the old terminator games on the original playstation one I really enjoyed. I never played the Terminator Salvation, but I would kind of like to see another kind of a continuation of the Terminator series. A really good one, maybe going back to the original Terminator movie and having them do it in kind of a you know one of these new gen uh, consoles or games when developed with the killer graphics. You know, would be a hot seller. But anyway, that's my honorable mention on that. My next question would be um, number nine, which would be what's your favorite looking consoles? Now this is one of the questions. I think that was posited on um, Steve Benway's um, little Saturday speaky deal. What's your favorite looking consoles? Pick three of them. Um, I would say this is, was tough to pick also because I, I, I'm a big fan of industrial design. I love the way things look. I, I, I love and I, I love the Atari 2600. I love the wood one. I like the black Vader looking one. Looks really cool too. That, that's one of my favorites. There's so many that jockey for those top three spots. But after really thinking about it as an artist and a visual person, the ones that I got the most excited looking at that just gelled for whatever reason, I'd say is a Panasonic 3DO. I love the squareness of it, the way it has a nice, just a staunch four big rounded columns or pillars in the corners of it. it just the mass of it itself, the way it looked, it looks substantial. And it looked, the, the, the outside of that console alone impressed me more than the PlayStation 1. Even though I love the PS1, I love the Panasonic 3DO. Now, I'm going to find a working one with a good working controller, but um, even if I never use that console, I definitely, when I get my black bookcase over here, that's going to be prominently displayed. I may even angle it a little bit where I can see the whole thing. I love the way that thing looks. I love the controller. I love the console. I love the Panasonic logo on there. It's just a very handsome console. I'm envious of all of my friends that have that console. I can't wait to get one. It'll be a while. I'll have to wait. But I'm going to get all of my retro consoles this year. Frankly, for the cost of what an Xbox One costs, I can probably get all of these retro consoles, which I'm excited about. Now, the games I'm finding, I've been looking at eBay this morning. Games are kind of expensive for some of the games that I want, but they're popular ones. But uh, I'm still going to get it. I would say the next best one, and this was hard to pick, I'd say the, the, the original Xbox, I don't know what it is, the black with that bright green, uh, the shape of it was kind of like an X. It also kind of reminds me of the Panasonic 3 oh, just a nice, perfect mass, perfect size. I like the, the way everything was congruent with the looks of it. The controller melded very nicely with it. The big giant looks like a button in the center, an Xbox logo. Even just the clean logo Xbox on it, it, it I was sold. I love the, even the packaging. When I look compare a PlayStation 2 game to an Xbox game, I get excited when I see the Xbox games. I don't know what it is. I just, so I'm excited about getting another original Xbox, which ironically will be another console that I'll be getting. I love the way it looks. You could throw the damn things off a fucking roof and they still work. They're ridiculously reliable. I went through, you know... Uh, five PS2s, but only one Xbox. So that tells you something about the reliability issue on those. So I'm, I'm definitely like the looks of the Xbox. Now the third choice would be, and I'll just tell you straight out, I like the new PlayStation 4. I think it is perfect in size. The scale of it is perfect compared to, it kind of reminds me of the, the very handsome PlayStation 2, which is my honorable mention, by the way, is the PS2, uh, although it's much smaller. But I love the way the new PlayStation 4 looks. It has a, that beveled front end. It looks like, reminds me of the monolith in 2001 Space Odyssey. It just has a kind of look. I like the, the matte black with the gloss, you know, uh, plastic or piano black or whatever on the top of it. Although it's a damn dust magnet. I love the way it looks. It's very handsome. I like everything about it. I, I wasn't crazy about the, the, the box it came in overall, but I, I do love the, when I pulled it out and saw that thing, I, I love the industrial design of it, and uh, I, I know I'm only have a few friends that have one of them, but I, you just, it's very handsome. Uh, I think the, 
to be honest with you, I like the Xbox One also. I think it's a very handsome industrial design. It has a slight retro, older look. Uh, and I like the two-tone, you know, matte and gloss piano black look. I think it looks very handsome on that as well. But the PlayStation 2 I actually like better. Now I've looked at both of them. I prefer, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the PS4 I prefer on that one. So anyway, I'd like to hear what, what are your favorite, your three top consoles? Which ones do you think are the most gorgeous? Or you just, you really get, a, you know, excited when you see them. I'd like to know. Okay, question uh, number 10. How important is gaming in your life? In other words, what um, well, my chair's going back here. What percentage? <clears throat> it's tough. I mean, a lot of us, some of us have you know full-time jobs where we get relationships. You get other things in your life, but even though like I you know pie slice, if you looked at it as a pie of my 24-hour day, I mean it would be a very mi minute slice of actual time that's uh, that's that's focused just on gaming, where I can allocate you know this much time. There's like lately it's been an hour and a half to three hours a night of gaming. That's not much when you consider you got 24 hours in a day, but even still, it's because it's what I think about all day long. It, it's what I look forward to as a hobby. It's it's the kind of immersion and escapism that, for whatever reason, I get the most excited about every damn day. I'm in a mindless job as a painter. I mean, it's just ridiculously, you know, uh, slow and just it's tedious. It just takes a lot of time. Sometimes I'll have some classical music or jazz. I'll bring my little ghetto blaster. I'll have it on very low, or I have no music at all, and I just daydream and I think about games and games I want to get for my retro consoles. I'm looking forward to getting. I think about the game definitely I'm going to be playing when I get home. I'm thinking about a level that frustrated the hell out of me the night before. That I can't you know wait to get back on. I just got, you know, yesterday, I haven't even looked at it yet, I got the brand new Game Informer magazine, I purposely haven't looked at it, I'm waiting, so tonight when I sit down with a fresh crack open, a nice ice cold IPA, Lagunitas IPA, my favorite by the way, I'm going to I'm gonna sit there and devour that, and just page by page go through it, I love my gaming magazines, I love watching my YouTube apps, and on my Xbox 360 at night, with a cold beer and seeing my friends' videos. It's so cool. I, I just I, Gaming is a huge part of my life. It's actually surpassed cars and a lot of other things that I thought would never pass them up. So I would say for me personally, it's a huge part of my life. Now, I mean, my life, my, my you know, home is where the heart is. My heart is with my wife, is with my home that we've created. We've built for 18 years together. We've got a wonderful family of a daughter. Uh, my wife had a daughter from another marriage. She was about three and a half when I came on board. But it's like it's my own. I don't have any children of my own. I can't have kids, but but I'm very happy to raise uh, my wife's daughter. So that's a big part of my life, and we stay in touch with her. She needs help quite often, or she just wants to talk. It's great to be there for her. I love my little Bengal cat, Vinnie Corleone, uh, uh, or Corleone, say it either way, by the way. Yeah, I got it from The Godfather. I just kind of put my own, you know, we need a Vinnie be kind of cool. He just looked like a Vinny. He had a V in his head. I call him Vinny. But anyway, Vinny's an important part of my life. I have other things that are higher priorities. You know, naturally, if something happens at the house, I would, you know, take my wife out first, take Vinny. I'd grab maybe a handful of my games or uh, my, you know, TV shows or movies and bolt out the door. But gaming overall is a big portion of my life. Uh, that's why I have this YouTube channel, Escape to Gaming. It's all about gaming. I'm going to have you know, bring in other things, talking about movies and TV shows and weekend trips and 80s nostalgia and all that. It's going to be excellent. But gaming's a, a big part of my life, and I assume that it is with quite a few of you. Let me know how big it is in your life. I know I have some friends now that, like me, they're older. They go, Dean, I just don't game as much as I'd like to. I'm only gaming a couple, a couple days a week. Uh, sometimes they go through phases, and, that, and that's fine. I, I go through them, too. The longest I'll go without gaming is usually about a week. And then I'm like jonesing for it, like a heroin fix. I can't wait to get back to it. Yeah, it's kind of like all you think about. So I know I'm addicted to it based on that alone, but let me know what you think. How, how big of a chunk is it to you? Does it really matter that much to you? Or is it, oh, that's nice. I like it a lot there with movies and entertainment. And that's fine, too. That You might be more of a casual gamer in that respect. Uh, like my wife and her friends, they like the little iOS games and the Facebook games to them. That's with the, ga the gaming, the social aspect of gaming that they like. 
or my friends that just, just love multiplayer 24-7. That's the aspect that they like. But what do you like about gaming? Why is it an important part of your life, and how important to, to you is it? Let me know in the, in the questions, or the answer, uh, comments down below. Um, number 11, we're down near the end now. What are your favorite three YouTube channels? Now, this is tough. I hate to even answer this because I have so many channels. Some of them I've been following for over three years. Some of them are mainstream channels. And I like their channels. I, I love IGN, for instance. And I like GameSpot and Inside Gaming on Machinima. Rev3 Games, I love, you know, Adam Cecil. These, these are channels that I like, but there's only a small portion of actual videos within those channels that I'll actually watch. Uh, because it relates to gaming news and, or that I'm interested in, a preview or trailer or review that I like. But there's... <clears throat> for YouTube channels, I have 110 or so that I subscribe to now, maybe a hair more than that. And this is tough. I don't want anyone to feel left out or to get their feelings hurt. But the three that have had the biggest impact on me, <clears throat> especially lately, and there's two of them that are new that moved right up to the top of the list, I'll try to explain why I like them. I, I would say the first one is Classic Game Room, uh, because it was the first gaming-related, you know, YouTube show uh, that I really fell in love with. Now, I saw GameSpot first and IGN first, but I, I had a, a kind of a connection with Mark. I could relate to Mark Bustler of Classic Game Room. He's on the other, you know, side of the United States. We haven't got to meet in person. We've only met through, you know, uh, Skype and phone call and um, lots of emails, usually it's emails, kind of like a pen pal, you know, relationship. And it's a, it's a wonderful friendship that I have. Someday I hope to meet him, whether we meet at an E3 event, or I may just, who knows, just fly back to Pittsburgh and see him. My wife has been anxious to go back to Pennsylvania. I have a lot of relatives in the East Coast in Virginia, in Pennsylvania, and up in New England, so it wouldn't be unheard of for me to go back there, and maybe I'll pop in and get to see Mark in person someday. But Mark is a good friend. Uh, <clears throat> I love his show. His rich voice, uh, the way he talks about games passionately, positively. He's very concise. He's extremely polished and professional. Uh, he's really the person that, that, that got me back into retro gaming. Here I donated all these games, you know, the classic game room. And then through him, I kind of wanted the games back and went out over the summer and bought most of them back, which was kind of humorous. But I think the world of Mark Bustle and classic game room, he definitely would be one of them. Uh... The other two are two newer ones, uh, and for my own reasons. Again, I'm kind of a, I like meaty uh, rants and vlogs, things that really get inside you to make you think, Question, questions that people posit that really get you to think about yourself, that get you to think about, I like that. That's a really thought-provoking question that he posits. And I would say Steve Benway, right off the top, is one of my new recent favorites. I haven't seen them all yet, but I've gone back and watched at least 65 or 70 percent of his Friday talkies, or his waffles, or whatever, they are, or Saturday speakies or Friday talkies. They're fantastic. A few of them I've seen a few times. Uh, he, he posits wonderful uh, questions. Sometimes he's outdoors, just walking in nature, and I find it very refreshing. Many of you, I know you feel the same way, that if, if you're familiar with this channel. I'll have a link below, by the way, for all for you know, for know all three of these channels. But I, I love the guy's, his gameplay videos. He doesn't uh, posture himself as haughty, oh, I'm the best gamer ever, and do speed runs of every game effortlessly. He goes, look, I play these games, and I'll probably play them badly, and he shows delightful gameplay videos. I cannot tell you how inspired I've been to, to buy a Panasonic 3DO after watching Steve's gameplay on the 3DO. It's fantastic. I went back and watched several of his old PlayStation, you know, one and two type games, uh, play, gameplay videos. Well, very, very entertaining. Those are much shorter, but I love his long 45-minute or hour Friday talkies in particular. It's been very inspirational to me. I honestly can tell you right now that a lot of my better um, vlogs that I've done the last month or so I wouldn't have done if it wasn't for Steve Benway. He was it really inspired me. I was getting really kind of bummed out near the end of last year about my channel. I didn't know what direction it was going. I saw Steve Benway's thing and I said, that's what I want to do. I love doing game reviews and all that, but I like doing the rants and long vlogs. So Steve Benway definitely is up there. I don't want to you know, go on and on about the guy. I think the world of many of you feel the same way, but I really like him a lot. The third one... Um, 
is another close, close relative in many ways, uh, even geographically. Different part of the UK of England is wonderful Lawn Boys post 1975, which I actually saw about a week, discovered him and subbed him a week, week and a half before Steve Benway, and saw Steve Benway's comments on his page, and then looked up, uh, and then saw that Steve Benway did video responses, and quickly subbed to Steve's channel. But Lawn Boys post 1975, Dave is really cool. He reminds me of myself. He's a gear a gearhead. His dad is a mechanic, apparently works on cars. He grew up around the smell of, you know, oil and 90 weight, you know, rear end fluid, 50 weight racing oil, uh, the smell of plastics in an interior or cars. And so he has that love of cars that I have. Uh, Mark Bustler also likes cars as well. <clears throat> but I, I love Lawn Boys Post 1975, his channel. I love his little intros. It's very personal. It's 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 low tech, a lot like my own stuff. That's why I like the guy. It's it's very sincere. There's nothing phony about it. You see him, you know, hoisting a big ass Fosters and inverting that can. I, I love that shit. I mean, it really is very cool. Um, I think the world of his channel. Uh, what I like about him, unlike my own things, is he's short and to the point. So I, that, you know, a lot of his videos are 10, 12 minutes. He feels more comfortable doing the shorter vlogs and rants. But he posits wonderful questions. I've gone through, and again, almost like ben, Steve Benway's, probably seen 65, 70% of his vlogs. I'm still going way back and going back and watching some of the older ones now. But I really enjoy his videos very, very much, his gameplay videos. And I can't wait to see him every day. He puts them out almost daily. It's a big part of my what I look forward to. There's many other ones. I have several in Europe and the UK. I'm, I'm very right on the coattails. Of, of these other ones. It was hard for me to pick the top three because there's so many I like and a lot of new ones that are fantastic. So I really only knew of people in the United States before. Now I'm seeing a whole world of just wonderful intellect and great personas uh, on YouTube over in the UK. It's just, it's been a, a, a treat for me, a smorgasbord that I, I'm delighted with. I can't wait to get home at night and go through my favorite channels. Anyway, those are my three. Let me know what are your three favorite YouTube channels and why in the comments. Now, the final question uh, is number 12. I mean, I went to 12 because I, I found 10, but I kept fighting with the last couple. I didn't want to whittle, whittle out all of these, so I said, I'll just do all 12. Uh, what are your most immersive games of all time that, that you really like? Um, let me see if I've got these. I might have copies of these. Yeah, I've got copies of a few of them. <clears throat> and some of these are things I've already talked about in some of my other deals. But what are your uh, your three most immersive games that you just were apps? For some, it's a Skyrim. Or for s someone else, maybe it is a Minecraft or something fairly simplistic. It's something you can get lost in to where a hundred hours goes by like nothing. I mean, even over the summer, I've put over 100 hours in, you know, GTA, or a Grand Turismo, or yeah, GTA 5, and it's just amazing the time you can put in, but that doesn't make the list as far, I had a, this was a tough one to whittle it down to, as far as my top three games, um, I would say, and I'll show them here, I've got two of them, the other ones I don't have, but is the missed one, I have, again, I'll show the missed three exile. That first miss game was absolutely captivating. Just simple static screenshots, the sound of water effects, these ambient nature sound effects in the background. The guy's voices, he was reading through stories. You go through the books, and you'd read these books and stories. You just really got involved. I mean, I just, I thought I was in a form of heaven. It was almost, like I've mentioned this many times, a religious experience, that first miss game. I also have it in my PlayStation 3 downloaded off the PlayStation 1, and I've had it also on one of my my earlier PCs, but I love that game and give anything to see a reboot of it. That was one of my most, I know, a rant, you know, earlier last year on um, Immersion Memories and what I thought, and that was one of the first games I brought up. Another one would be, and I've mentioned this so many times, is the first Manhunt, which I really only played on the PlayStation 2 all the way through. I unlocked all the levels, played it on the hardcore mode, Unlock everything, all the artwork, everything you could see. I just love this Manhunt game to death. It's so well done. The graphics, it still holds up really good today. It's an unusual hybrid of a game with stealth, 
uh, the first half of the game, or a third of it at least, is mostly melee and what you can find in your environment to use to survive. And then you start getting into guns, and then the game like transforms into almost a completely different game into a cover-based shooter at that point. But this game, immersion-wise, and how I felt, and, and when it going back, even replaying it repeatedly, it never got old. The fear factor, being in that world and environment, never it just it was amazing to me. I, I just I cannot. And the second one was as it is as, as well, but the story in the first one in the voice of Brian Cox, and then the twist, and even in that story, uh, it was fantastic. The last couple levels where you're in the mansion of the quote director and approaching the outside of this huge fortified mansion and grounds and the hedge maze and everything and then getting infiltrating inside the mansion I mean just the just thinking about it today I, I, I get it's like a, a wave of fear a blanket of fear comes right over me I love that game it's so immersive uh, the, the last one would be and friends that really know me well have known me for you know over a decade or so now no especially my friends that came by and watched me play this selfishly I wouldn't even let them play for all I do a three level all right dude you can play one level you know, and I go back to hogging the controller again and it's this wonderful uh, return to Castle Wolvenstein which I've mentioned so many rants I probably bored people to death and other people have played it yeah that game was okay dude I mean the graphics don't hold up quite as well today looking back on it. It's still a fantastic shooter. Mark Bustler reviewed this game a little over a year ago. And he even said in his review of it, of my copy that I donated to Classic Game Room, he says, give the game a chance. Play it a few levels, because once you get into the game, you start to level up, you find all the hidden gold and stuff in the environments, you can level up your weapons and level up your health and abilities, and then you start getting some of the cooler weapons and getting into some really killer levels and level design. This game kicks ass. I'm definitely going to be doing a review of this as well. But those, are anyway, are my three most immersive games. And that was very hard to pick. There's so many. And there's probably 20 games I can think of right off the bat that were just like worlds within worlds. But what are your top three most immersive games and why? I'd love to hear. So anyway, that's my lengthy uh, top 12 questions, gaming-related questions. If you want to do a video response, I would love and be delighted to have a, a video response to this. Um, I know they're, they're, they're different questions. I, I, I was inspired by the wonderful Steve Benway and originally Shamus, uh, or uh, I know I'm not saying it right, the, the wonderful Shen Musu. That, that, that I love his channel as well, by the way. He's, he posits some fantastic, uh, fun thoughts, got a tremendous amount of personality, wonderful pickup videos as well. And he really did those 10 questions justice. Steve Benway, I was not surprised to see him follow up on that as well. And I love those questions too, but I wanted to come up with my own. Uh, and, and again, in tribute and in honor of the guy that originally, I don't know the fellow that originally you know, posited that, those 10 questions, but my hat's off to him. He did a wonderful job with those 10 questions. I was just inspired by these other videos I saw and wanted to do this. So leave your video response or just put down, you know, as best you can, some of your favorites. Uh, questions and the answers to those questions down in the comments below. I'll have a link again to the to the, the people that I've referred to down below and you can definitely check out their wonderful channel. So again, thank you very much for watching and enjoy your games, enjoy your films and enjoy life. That's really what it's all about.